All right, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. <clears throat> uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Ryan Christensen. I'm the president and head distiller of Caledonia Spirits. Um, before we jump into the dirt, I am gonna give a few thank yous because this, uh, this project has been massive uh, for our small company and it's uh, nothing short of a miracle to even be here in this field today. So um, first off, it starts with the team at Caledonia Spirits. Um, the, the amount of work, uh, the camaraderie, the creativity, uh, everything that my team has done to, to make this possible. A um, few quick introductions. Minty Conant, this is my business partner and CFO. To her right is Todd Hardy. He's the founder of Caledonia Spirits. <laughs> Beside Todd is Chris Ely, production manager at Caledonia Spirits. Next to Chris is... Sorry. Rob, Sorry. it's very warm. <laughs> Rob Higgins from Negley and Chase, and Tim Duff from Wayman Lamphere Architects. So, thank you to the entire Caledonia team. Thank you to the entire building design team. Uh, thank you to DeWolf Engineering. Thank you to Engineering Services of Vermont, Wayman Lamphere, Negley and Chase. Um, this has been one of the biggest projects, biggest teams that I've ever worked on, and I can't believe that we're finally here now. Um, thank you to our new neighbors on Berry Street and River Street. And anybody that heard that weight drop the last few weeks, did anybody hear that? Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, just, just so that we're clear, distillation is very quiet compared to dynamic compaction. Uh, thank you to our lenders. Uh, Mascoma Savings has been an incredible partner to us. Um, Eldon Doobie, I think I saw you here. Eldon, thank you very much. Uh, just to elaborate a little bit, um, Eldon is one of those bankers who looks at your balance sheet, but after he looks you in the eye and, and really gauge you as an entrepreneur and engages your team, and, and that goes, goes a long way with us. Um, in addition, thank you to NCIC for the support on, on this financing, and uh, also Granite State Capital. Uh, the governor is here, Governor Phil Scott. Thank you, Governor. Uh, we have congressional delegation here. We do not have uh, Bernie himself or Senator Leahy or Peter Welch, but he, they have sent representation, and it's very appreciated that they're here. So thank you. Now, a huge thank you, and there's actually a couple of exclamation points here on the, on the piece of paper, to the city of Montpelier. We, we first got involved in this site and, and with the city um, quite some time ago. This has been a big project that's taken uh, a, a lot of turns, and we're finally moving forward, and, and we couldn't be more excited. But the support of, this, of city management, Bill Frazier, Sue Allen, um, the, the entire team at the city of Montpelier, uh, city council has been so supportive of this project. It, it's, been, it's been wonderful. Uh, Tom McArdle and Public Works, those guys have worked so hard on our behalf that we are very, very appreciative of that. Um, Mayor Watson, who's right here. <laughs> Former Mayor John Holler, also a huge supporter of, of this project and a really great guy and, and uh, somebody who's been very helpful to us. And then one last person from Montpelier, and I know I'm skipping a whole ton of people that have been very helpful, but um, this project would not have even been an idea or a vision if not for Jesse Baker, who is no longer in Montpelier, she's now in Winooski, but um, if anybody's had the pleasure of meeting Jessie Baker, you know that she's doing heroic things right now, and, and uh, we're forever thankful for her. Um, there are many folks to thank, obviously, but we also need a huge thank you for the greatest town in the world, which is Hardwick, Vermont. <laughs> if not for Hardwick, I don't think Caledonia Spirits would be in business. I, I, the, uh, the spirits business is incredibly competitive and it takes a community to rally, rally around a company uh, to find its way through that. And uh, the Hardwick community, Greensboro, Craftsbury, all of Northern Vermont said, this is a team, this is a product, we believe in these guys and they gave us a jump start. And we have now grown to capacity in, in Hardwick. Um, and we need more space. So Hardwick is, is by all means a town that, that helped us get here.
Now, we thought we were out of space about three years ago. Um, it felt like we were bursting at the seams in Hardwick. We, uh, we have developed a wonderful skill in doing more in a small space, and that um, is a skill that I hope that we will not forget, and I think we'll utilize that, that skill here. Um, because even this space, which looks very large um, as we start to dig in the dirt, um, there's not as much room here as we thought. You know, we, we are already looking at, you know, our, our business has grown since construction design began. So um, we're, we're, we're glad that we had that skill. Um, we are in a very competitive business in the spirits landscape. Uh, there are major billion dollar companies out there that we go to bat with every single day. Um, they are buying up shelf space. They have flawless marketing. They have all of the shiny objects. Yet somehow um, this little Caledonia Spirits and Bar Hill Gin continue to grow. And um, I have a couple of theories as to why that might be. Um, first off, we distill every single bottle that goes to market. Um, that may not sound crazy, and that may sound crazy to you, but um, when we go to market with every bottle, we know who made it. It's our distillers, it's our team, it's Scott, it's Andrew, it's Craig, it's, it's the whole team at Caledonia Spirits. Um, that's not normal in this industry. There are a lot of brands out there that are buying products and selling products and slapping a label on it. And there's all sorts of marketing that goes along with it. Um, we produce everything and, and, uh, and it's a harder path. Um, but to, uh, to steal a quote from, from our founder, Todd Hardy, that's what makes the gin taste better. Uh, rather than heat the honey that we make our products with, um, if we were to heat the honey, it would go through the pumps easier, it would go through the filters easier, everything would work a lot better, but you know, it actually wouldn't taste that good. You would not taste and smell the aroma of the wildflowers that the bees are feeding on. You would not taste and smell the uh, apple blossoms that the, the, fees, the bees are feeding on. And um, again, that's what makes the gin taste better. Rather than ship commodity grains from the Midwest, uh, here to Vermont. Uh, we buy certified organic grains from Todd Hardy's farm in Greensboro. Um, Todd nurtures the land, he takes care of the land, and we know that Todd's farm is allowing the land to rest and he's not, he's not polluting the rivers. So we feel good about the grains that we're buying and uh, that also makes the gin taste better. Rather than depend on market pricing um, to, to figure out what we're gonna pay our farmers, we have conversations with our farmers. When we meet with a farmer and we talk about a contract, first we need to figure out what their business model can support. Because what we want is the best quality raw materials, not the best pricing. And it starts with, with quality raw materials. Um, again, that, that also makes the gin taste better. Um, rather than paying employees minimum wage, we started a livable wage. That also makes the gin taste better. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. We started this business on a 15 gallon direct fire still. If anybody doesn't know what that means, that means there was a fire underneath a still, which was producing 160 proof ethanol. That's not wise, and we probably won't ever do that again, and they probably, I definitely mean definitely. Um, but that's, that's what we had, that's what we started with, and, and we had to build a brand. So we ran that still about once a week to begin with. Uh, that produced just a few cases per distillation, and we brought it to, to Vermont. Uh, we, we then went to Massachusetts, um, and eventually we were running that still three times per day, every single day. We were starting very early in the morning and ending fairly late in the evening. Um, meanwhile, Todd was uh, driving what we call Mom's Red Car, which was packed to the gills with Bar Hill Gin, and he was driving that all over the nation. He would, he would, we would load that car up, um, and we'd load it so full that we'd actually have to close one door with the window down so we could get one more case in there and then put a sign that says, Todd, don't open the door till you roll the window down and take this case out and then we put the window up. And then we take it for a quick spin around the parking lot to make sure the wheels weren't actually rubbing because uh, it was carrying so much gin. But Todd would drive that right down to the city. Um, we'd drop it off to the distributor. The distributor instantly wanted more and we would just have to run that still over and over and over. Um, and, and for the record, uh, Mom's red car was also known as the mothership. So today we have larger stills, uh, we have a larger team, um, we have larger ambitions, and, and we're looking at this, this globe and it's actually getting a little bit smaller as, as we start to figure out how the spirit world works. And um, 
we couldn't be more thankful of the support. Um, we couldn't believe that 200 people RSVP'd to see us put a shovel into the dirt. Uh, we are very excited when we open this distillery, but we haven't even built the building yet and we already feel the support. Um, so thank you all for being a part of this story. This is undoubtedly a new chapter for Caledonia Spirits. Um, and we very much look forward to it. So thank you all. Now, I'm going to hand this off uh, to the governor. So, governor, take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Ryan, I'm not sure that everyone's here to watch uh, us shovel dirt or to listen to us speak. They may be here for another reason. It has to do with a cocktail party. I think that's what the invitation said. Uh, so good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for including me in today's celebration. I recently started what I call uh, the capital for a day, where along with my cabinet, I'm uh, spending a day in each county. Uh, we started in Rutland County, uh, brought the entire cabinet there, all my commissioners and secretaries, uh, and uh, then went from there to, to Caledonia. Uh, and we've done uh, Franklin County uh, and Windsor County as well. And I did this because of what I experienced with my everyday jobs tour when I was lieutenant governor. Uh, working a day in someone else's shoes was really important. And it gives you a touch and a feel for what the struggles and the challenges and opportunities are uh, throughout Vermont. And um, so we decided to do this. And by the way, as Lieutenant Governor, I worked in a distillery for a day. So uh, if I'm uh, not successful uh, in the next couple of elections, I may come over and see you. Uh, but this new uh, Capital for a Day initiative is another opportunity for me and my cabinet to roll up our sleeves and walk in someone else's shoes. Uh, we've done, uh, again, all these, uh, these trips, and we've met with uh, constituents, lawmakers, businesses, local partners, and state employees as well. And the goal really is to provide uh, direct access to the administration to make us better prepared to address the regional challenges and, and statewide challenges that we, uh, we see and uh, know that we have to get beyond in order for uh, there to be economic growth. So that day we spent... Uh, uh, in Caledonia County, uh, we, we started off the day at Caledonia Spirits in Hardwick. We had our cabinet meeting right there in the uh, facility. Um, we had a lot of ideas after that day and a half at your facility. Uh, that was a joke, by the way. We didn't really spend a day and a half there. Uh, but we, uh, they educated us uh, as to what your product was, uh, vision and industry. And I learned, uh, for one thing, uh, that... Uh, Burdocks do have a use. Uh, maybe we'll see something in the future with that. Uh, but, uh, but I always wondered what they were good for. Uh, while I was there, I got to view the blueprints for this new building. Uh, and as someone who spent 30 years of my life in construction, uh, it was exciting uh, for me to see and for me to be here uh, as part of this, uh, this groundbreaking. It seems everywhere I look in Vermont, uh, we see more uh, breweries, distilleries, vineyards, and they're growing by leaps and bounds. And over the last 14 years, Vermont has seen a number of these distilleries grow from uh, a mere three to now we have 28 uh, in the state. That's an 833% increase. This is a sector that is helping put us on the map, increasing our tourism draw, and leading to more economic activity in our communities through related businesses like barrel uh, builders, uh, local farms, uh, where we get our, our wheat, and and uh, where we get our, our honey, as well as hotels and restaurants as well. And as a state, uh, we have to continue to support entrepreneurs like Ryan, who have invested in the natural resources that we have and the working landscapes, because they create good paying jobs and rewarding jobs as well. Uh, this is really an example of what we can do uh, when we work together, we pull together in the same direction Ryan and his team have already achieved so much, including international recognition, Gin of the Year at the Hong Kong International Spirit Competition, as well as, that's a great, that, yeah, they deserve a round of applause for that, as well as um, the uh, Vodka Distillery of the Year at the Berlin International Spirits Competition, among various other gold medals over the years. So, Ryan, I just want to uh, thank you uh, and for making uh, Vermont, your home, uh, and to choose to invest and expand here. And I look forward to toasting this completion of this uh, 
incredible project. So thank you very much for inviting me as well. All right, so um, I am undoubtedly a better distiller than I am an MC, but I, I'm doing my best here. Um, but next up, we have the mayor, Ann Watson. Hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for coming out for this great occasion today. Um, I am so excited to uh, be welcoming, not just you, but Caledonia Spirits uh, to Montpelier uh, on behalf of the city. We are so grateful to have you. Thank you so much for, for uh, gosh, spending so much time to get to this point. Uh, I also want to thank um, the city staff who spent a lot of time, and Ryan already mentioned this, but uh, uh, Bill Frazier, Tom McCardle, Sue Allen, Jesse Baker, uh, who spent so many hours uh, to to make this happen, to get to this point, to get to today. Uh, it's, it's just so very exciting uh, for us. I also uh, want to thank the neighbors as well um, for, uh, for their accommodation of the space. This is going to be a great addition to our community. And I just want to also recognize, I don't know if you know this, Ryan, but I live right there. I, I'm one of those neighbors on Berry Street. Um, so I feel like I should be bringing you like a, a banana bread right now. Because um, <laughs> I anticipate that we are going to be neighbors for a long time. Uh, so, so welcome all, thank you. Um, and I just want to also mention what this means for the city of Montpelier. Uh, we are so excited to be bringing these uh, 40 jobs uh, or more, is it 40? I think it's, okay, last time we checked it's 40. Um, 40 jobs to Montpelier. Uh, and to be bringing a, a value-added um, agricultural business uh, to the ecosystem of businesses in Montpelier. Uh, we're uh, excited to be growing our business community here in Montpelier, and we know that uh, beyond a great distillery, uh, this is going to be a great destination for people to, to come to in central Vermont. So thank you all for being here. I don't want to get in the way of uh, the, the rest of the cocktail party, so um, thank you, and uh, yeah. Let's have a drink. <laughs>